This is going to be probably a relatively long video. I'm going to do a demo uh, unboxing and we're going to try out and tear down and go through a brand new power station from All Powers with solar charging capabilities. Let's check it out. I received a big box from All Powers that's going to be a new power station that we're going to do a tear down on and review. And I got a giant solar panel also with this one that we're going to do a test on and check it out. Not a sunny day today, so I don't know how the solar panel is going to perform in an overcast day. And they're calling for rain for the next week. So we may have to do the solar panel test and see how it performs on a clear day. But we're going to get this one open today, give it a charge, put it through its paces, and tear it down. And I'll show you guys the, the, the solar panel, which will be part of this video. So let me get this box open. This thing weighs a ton. It was supposed to have been sent by post but it was an overweight item so they had to send it out by FedEx. The guy dropped it at my door. Uh, I watched him on camera literally drop it, crush the corner of the box here. So hopefully the unit inside is not damaged. This thing weighs probably about 80 pounds, 60 to 80 pounds. It's heavy as hell. Let's get this box open. Comes with the accessory bag. Warranty card. And here's the unit. This thing is big. To give you an idea of the weight of this unit, it did have handles molded into the side of the box, but the, the box is ripped just in transport. Inside the accessory bag, there's just going to be power cords, I'm sure. What do we have in here? We have an AC power cord and a DC power cord to charge from solar. It uses a standard AC cord. First things first, I'm going to plug this into power and I'm going to plug it directly in to, to power, not through my isolation transformer because a unit like this is going to draw a fair number of amps to charge. So I'm going to plug this in directly to the mains power. We'll get this unit charged up fully. And I'm going to put it on a load test. We're going to load this thing down and see what it can do. But as I do that, we'll go over some of the features that this has and I'll look up the specifications. On the back we have the charging door. So it's got AC receptacle, it's got solar panel input and what's that third one there? The third one is an extended battery port. So it's got a couple of extended battery ports here that you can put additional battery packs on. It's got a circuit breaker here. Solar charging is 12 to 150 volts. 20 amps maximum so you can charge this with 150 volt solar panel we're gonna plug this in it takes 15 amps to charge at 120 volts so let's plug it in and get this thing charging and then we'll take a look at what's on the front right now the battery is at 69 percent it is charging at 529 watts you need to use the app to switch it up to 1500 watt here's our output on this it's a sine wave output so we've got two USB-C ports, 100 watts. We've got a USB-A port, two USB-A ports, 18 watts, and a USB-A, 12 watts. So we've got a total of, of four USB-A, two 12 watt, two 18 watt, and two 100 watt USB-C. We also have a 12 amp, or 12 volt, 10 amp DC output. But here's, here is the, uh, the bread and butter here. 20 amp AC outlets, four of them of your conventional outlets and a 20 amp output. It says recreational use only. It's a 30 amp plug but it's a 20 amp output. That's total 20 amps not 20 amps per outlet. So in theory I could plug my car into this and charge it on 120 volts. It doesn't have a 240 volt out, but it's just a, a 120. The output power on this is 2,500 watts. So guess what we're going to load up on this thing when it's charged? I'm going to put a couple heaters on there, and we're going to drive this thing up and see how much power I can get out of this thing once it's fully charged. And then once I fully discharge it, then we're going to open this unit up and take a look at the inside but I gotta do that when it's fully discharged. I'm not gonna open up something with this many batteries in it 
that uh, could potentially be a problem if there was a short circuit. That's not going to happen, but I'm just saying it's a little safer to take them apart when they are completely discharged. What I want to know on this is, does it operate like a UPS? So, looks like the AC outlets are on right now. Let me just plug in, oh, I don't know, let me grab a heater. We'll plug a heater in while it's running. And just see what happens when I plug in this space heater. This should draw a few amps, I would think. Will it run? So it's drawing a thousand watts right now. That's what this heater draws. I'm charging at 415 and I'm discharging at uh, 1100 watts right now. According to the manual, I'm just in standard charging mode because it can support 1000 watts of charging, but I have to use the app to change that. So I'm going to have to hook up the app in order to do that. But it supports what they call, actually, no, this is in mute mode, 500 watts. It can, fast mode can reach 1500 watts, which is the maximum input uh, charging of standard mode was 1000 watts. And mute mode is 500 watts. It's a self, a self adjusting to reach mute mode. All right, reading the instructions, it tells me to use the UPS function. I have to turn on the AC outlet first. So let's turn on the AC outlet and then connect the AC power. That turns the unit on into UPS mode and it says do not exceed 1500 watts. Again, I'm, I have not put this into uh, turbo mode. It's just in the normal quiet mode here. I'll just turn on my heat gun. Drawing about 600 something, 700 watts. Okay, now when I unplug the AC power, that should continue to run. AC power unplugging now. Okay, it works. That's how it's supposed to work. I said I didn't turn on the AC first before plugging it in. AC power restored and the UPS light will come back on. There you go, there's the UPS light. Unplug the power again. Nothing changed. We'll go back to full power and I'm gonna turn on another load. Drawing 1600 watts now. I'm over the maximum input, so it's back on battery. But if I shut off this other one, it should switch into UPS mode again. Right, now we're in UPS mode. It is plugged into AC. I'm running at 118 volts. I'm gonna disconnect the power. And the power dropped to 110 volts, which is coming off the inverter. back to AC power going back up to 118 volts which is probably what I'm getting on the outlet right now that's more than likely what my voltage is if I were to measure it I probably see the same voltage right now today uh, I'm gonna charge this up now we'll shut the heater off we're gonna let the battery fully charge and then we're gonna put this thing through its paces we'll time it we'll look at the waveform and so forth off of the AC output and uh, we'll put it through its paces and time it and see how long it's going to go for with a full charge and then I'll do the teardown. Oh, I am going to install the All Powers app on my phone because I do want to turn this into turbo mode so that I can charge it at full power and uh, to do that I need to install the app so hopefully I won't have to register anything but they probably will make me register an email account so I click plus and I should see turn on the device it's, it's on here and uh, next step so I should see allow access to the device's location only when using the app or deny. I guess I have to allow it when I'm using the app. There I see it. I see it showing up here. I have not had to register anything other than connect my phone 
to the device itself and here we go so I've got my AC set on and I've got my output power set let me see what we can figure out on this app how does this work I can turn my outlets on and off here I can select 50 or 60 Hertz output uh, if I tap on here what does that do oh please choose your login had to log in with my throwaway account all right so I'm logged in if I click on here will this let me uh, mute mode let's turn the mute mode off let's put it in a fast mode and uh, that should crank up the charging power which it has we are now charging at 1225 1300 watts so this is going to go to full power so you need to use the app and if you want to turn this thing into the the, the fastest charging possible which uh, we want to and you can always have eco mode shut down so in other words if you're not using it you can have it shut down in one hour two hour four hour or six hour if you turn on eco mode that's that we won't turn that on so fast mode is 1444 watts right now if I put it in standard mode this should drop down to about a thousand there we go So obviously we want to charge this thing as quickly as possible so I'll put it into fast mode and hopefully it'll stay there I won't have to use the app again once it's set you can also connect it to your Wi-Fi network I just did it with Bluetooth but you could connect it with Wi-Fi as well and control it over your Wi-Fi network so you could control this if you weren't at home and here it is right here it's a 2 kilowatt battery 2160 watt hours so it's a 2 kilowatt battery that's in here so what that means is you'll be able to draw 2,000 watts for one hour, 1,000 watts for two hours, 500 watts for four hours, etc. That gives you your, your relative run time. Or in other words, if I plugged my car into it, it would give me about what? Six miles of range? <laughs> Something like that. If I, were to, if I were to plug my electric car into this and completely deplete this battery and put it into the battery in my car, I'd get about six miles. Uh, 1525 watts so it's it's cruising along here pretty good one thing I wanted to confirm was I shut it off I completely shut it down I unplugged it and I plugged it back in I want to see whether it's going to go back into that fast charge mode or whether I have to select it with the app it looks like it's uh, charging at 500 watts is it going to kick up or do I have to load the app every time to kick it into turbocharging all right okay it is in mute mode so it does it does switch back if you unplug it now I kicked it back up to fast mode so if you want to take advantage of the fast charging you need to use the app if the fast charging is not important then you can do it without the app and again it'll work with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so if you're using this for camping for example or in your trailer and you don't have a Wi-Fi network you can connect your phone by Bluetooth it doesn't have to be connected to the network other than to initially sign in a funny thing happened when I was out having lunch this completely charged so it only took well, only to maybe took an hour and a half to fully charge it I wasn't gone that long went out grab my lunch and it's fully charged so I can unplug this now we're gonna load it up and we're gonna see how long it runs and then maybe we'll be able to get the solar panel going so while I test this I'm going to hook up my scope so we can take a look at the the uh, the waveform off of it got a great uh, nice clean waveform we're going to start adding power to this so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the first electric heater so this is drawing 1100 watts the waveform is perfectly clear next I'm going to add the heat gun that's going to add another 700 or so watts on low power now we are drawing 1600 watts 
Can I kick this to high or will it trip? 2200 watts now. Okay, I'm drawing 2200 watts. That's maximum power. Waveform looks clean. I'm starting the stopwatch up. So we can see how long this is going to run for. According to this, it's going to run for 46 minutes. So while I let this run, it's not plugged into power. As you can see, the AC is disconnected. We're going to uh, monitor this unit and watch the power consumption. 60 hertz, 46 minutes. But it's telling me it's going to run. We'll see if it does. We're at 98%. We're going to run this at 2200 watts, which is fairly close to its 2500 watt maximum, which is for the sustain. It's got 4000 watts of surge power and 2500 watts continual power. We're going to run it at 2200 or just under 2200 because that's what these uh, little two heaters that I've got going are drawing. One of them is this heater here. That heater's running, and as is this one here. And this one went off just because I just uh, I just picked it up, so I tripped the uh, the t anti tip. So we'll just get it back going there again. Okay. While this is doing its thing, heating my garage with battery power essentially, I'm going to get the solar panel unpacked so we can try that out because the sun's actually come out today. So this is the All Powers AP SP037 solar panel. This is folded up. We're going to unfold the panel. I'm going to set it up while it's still got a bit of sun and see what kind of power we can draw off this to charge up the uh, battery system that I'm currently discharging while I'm setting this up. So this has got like five panels that fold out. So let me just get this folded out. There's the panels fully deployed. Each panel is approximately 18 inches. I've got a, a ruler down there. So we got five of them, 19 inches across. We got five of them. So that gives you a total of about, just about nine feet of real estate is what you're gonna need to lay out your panels. Let's check the charging voltage. Charging voltage is, well, 45 volts, 44.2 volts. We'll find out when I bring the unit outside and plug it in. Even though it's still discharging right now, I think I might interrupt the discharge cycle just so I can bring it out and show you guys the charging voltage while I've got some sun and charging current while I've got some sun. Okay, now we're charging from solar. Oh, I'm blocking it a bit. I got a bit of shade hitting it. Move the, I'm going to move this over a bit because I am shading the panel a little bit. Okay, so I'm getting about 189 watts right now. Again, my panels aren't really... There's a bit of overcast. It's not a clear day. There is some high cloud. But uh, it's about as good as I can expect for November the 1st. I'm just going to adjust this panel here that's just a little bit off angle. So 190 watts is what I'm getting out of these panels. There's high cloud today, so this is not optimal charging, but it's better than a cloudy day. The sun is out, but there is high cloud up in the sky, so we are looking at a bit of filtered sunshine, and we're still getting 195 watts. That's working pretty good sun's actually getting a little bit stronger so we might see that yeah see now we're at 200 watts let's just watch this while the uh, the sun comes out the clouds are parting a bit so we'll see what type of power this panel will put out and then we'll go back in and finish draining the battery for the uh, the discharge test I know that this is gonna skew my numbers a little bit as far as the runtime by a minute or two because I'm putting a bit of energy back in so we'll have to take that into consideration but I felt that it was important that I was able to do the solar panel test at the same time as the uh, the, the, the teardown and discharge test just because the weather has to cooperate and again being November here in Canada Vancouver area the weather right now this is when we hit the rain the rainy season so just it just so happened that this arrived today 
tomorrow they're calling for a downpour and I can already see the clouds the high clouds but doing okay right now considering the circumstances now also keep in mind that if you had the AC outlets turned on you could be drawing up to around 200 watts if you were getting 200 watts from the solar panel and your battery was charged you could be using 200 watts to power AC appliances such as your laptop or your TV or whatever else you might need to operate during a power failure or when you're you're camping so if you've got the solar panels deployed without tapping into the battery you can still operate equipment while it's charging or while it's running looks like we're at 221 220 watts now the Sun is uh, as I say starting to shine a little brighter we're now up to 200 and well it was 227 but 225 watts is what we're able to get today and I'm having to adjust the panels just because as the Sun moves I'm having shadows creep over like for example if I put my hand in front we'll see the power will probably drop down a bit there we go I just put my hand in front dropped 189 watts I'll show you what I just did just to give you an idea of how sensitive I just went like that and the power dropped to 189 watts and then if I remove my hand it'll go back up there we go that gives you an idea that the solar panels have to be in direct Sun with no obstructions even over a portion of the panel they have to be in full Sun and if you've got full exposure solar panels can generate a lot of free power I think we've done what I can on the solar panels I'll show you guys the back side of them so the solar panels just unfold and I've just set them up like that see I'm starting to get a bit of a shadow right there but it doesn't take much to really reduce the power output but they just unfold they have little stands built on these are waterproof so they can be out left outside all the time you could install this on your house lay it flat on the roof and anchor it down there are anchors right here on all the panels that you could use to anchor it down so as a backup power solution you could put this on your roof leave it there and run the DC cable into the house and into the power station so it's always fully charged and ready to go in the event of a power failure strip down of the panels is pretty quick because they fold up you always start on the right side you know which is the right side well first of all if you put them upside down the supporting legs will be opening the wrong way but you always start with the side the power cord comes out of this is the left and it's also got the largest gap here to strip the panel down you just simply fold it up just like this and then fold this one in and then there's buckles that go around the back it's 37.4 uh, volts under load I measured about 45 under no load and it's 400 watts but when I measured it I was only getting 227 but remember this is what I'm this is what I'm working with today as you can see I don't have a clear sky so if this was a, a full Sun clear day we would expect to see the output much closer to 400 watts but I'm on an overcast day, day today in November so the power output that I got is would be would be expected it's clear up here the problem is the Sun's not up there the Sun's down here so that's uh that's why my output was a little lower than it would be capable of and as we saw from the test that I did I measured 44.8 volts or something so 45.3 is your open circuit voltage um, 400 watts maximum power under 400 watt load uh, 37.4 volts is the output a short circuit current is 11.45 amps the maximum power in what they call the VMP maximum power voltage 37.4 volts maximum power current is 10 amps so 
it will then uh, produce 10.6 amps at 37.4 volts, which is a fairly substantial amount of power for, for a solar panel of this size. And it even tells you how to use it. It says how to use. Place a solar panel under strong sunlight. Well, we didn't do that today. We put it under filtered sunlight. And it says angle the panels towards the sun. And don't use it when it's cloudy because you're not going to get any significant power out of it when it's cloudy. Okay, I did have the power unit outside while I was uh, doing the solar charging demo, which is part of this video. So I gained a percent or so, which might affect my runtime by seconds, maybe a minute. So shouldn't affect it. We've been running now for eight, about 19 minutes. According to this, there's 27 minutes remaining, which is what it said was remaining when I took it out. Okay, I've been running now for 27 minutes. According to this, there's about 19 minutes to go. We'll see whether we get the rated output. So I thought you guys might be interested in looking at some of the, uh, the specs on here. As you can see, the waveform is, is clear, very clear. 60.4 hertz is the frequency, and we have an RMF. RMS of 110.6 volts But as you can see the, the waveform is clean This noise you see here it's because this is a switching power supply That is uh, produces a, a high voltage DC and then it, it converted into an AC using the sine wave converter And you're seeing a little bit of the noise from the uh, switcher. I'm sure it's holding steady at 110.7 volts at 60.4 hertz. There we go. Watch this. The camera should follow him. Yep. And, oh, it missed him. Dropping it. Three minutes remaining, 7%. Been going for 42 minutes and a half now. 42.30. Okay, you guys just saw it stop there. It got uh, 42 minutes and 59, 43 minutes. So, so, so maybe 42 minutes is uh, what it did when it shut down. I was just looking for the footage from the... Oh, here he is. Here's the FedEx guy. Can we see him better on this camera? You can tell he doesn't look like he's too happy because it's heavy. And he just kind of thump, dumps it on the corner, crushes the corner and gets out his phone, takes his picture... And then he's gone. And it does shut down with 5% remaining. I'm imagining that the DC outputs probably can still be used. Yes. The DC outputs can still be used at that level. So AC shuts down with 5% remaining. There's still a little bit of juice left that can power your uh, phone and something to charge it up. But um, we're going to shut this down now. And uh, proceed to take it apart. I don't exactly know how this comes apart, but I have a feeling that uh, these are covers for some screws. So we'll just pop these out. And just start removing screws until the thing falls apart. It appears to be standard Phillips screws inside here. I just figured I would show you the, the specs on the back here, which I didn't show before. I looked at the instruction manual. So two kilowatts basically, they're 48 volt batteries, 42 amp hour. Input of 100 to 120 volts at 15 amps maximum, which we were drawing that at 1500 watts. Solar can be between 12 and 150 volts, 20 amps. So you can charge at up to 1000 watts maximum. So you could put a couple of those solar panels together. Uh, car charger, 12 to 24 volt DC. I didn't show you guys that, there's no point take forever to charge and it, there's the operating temperature so 0 to 40 degrees for charge and minus 10 to 40 degrees Celsius or 14 to 104 Fahrenheit 32 to 104 Fahrenheit for people in the excited states that are still on that archaic measuring system that the rest of the world abandoned in like the 70s more screws here on the side we'll use the screw gun for that one okay with the screws out top will lift off. Ah, more screws. See there were screws that went in through here as well. 
and the screws on the front. So that takes the top off. There's more screws here that need to come out. Next, I think these panels come off. Oh, there's more screws on the side here. Yeah, okay. So these side panels gotta come off. And then there's more screws in both of the sides. There we go, we've got more screws here. I'm sure they're on both sides of it. It's coming apart. The front is coming off of it. Slowly, it is, at least on one side it is. Always that one last elusive screw that messes everything up for everyone, right? Okay. That term has more meaning to it than any other. Okay, what do we do? As things fall down off the shelf. What we've got here is we've got a completely shielded inverter. There's four fans, two on each side. I gotta get the back cover off as I wanna open this one up and look inside here as well. So I gotta get the back cover separated as well as the front. First things first, I'm gonna unplug the DC and the AC power connectors and unplug the control cable and remove the ground wire. This way I can remove this front control panel and get that out of the way. I'll show you guys this while it's here. Yeah, great big heavy lugs here. Earth connection, line in neutral, and then the big plug here. So that's the AC output. It's fed from this con this, this uh, connector here. The DC is fed over to this one. And they are, well, I guess they are the same connector. So you could actually plug them in wrong. But this is the DC cable. And the AC cable is this one here. It's the shorter one. Is the AC cable. Back just pops off. Okay, there we go. This one's a 110 volt version. Now, let's uh, zip open this inverter case and take a look at all the goodies inside. Now, I gotta remember this thing still got DC power to it, so I gotta be careful that I don't drop any metal screws. The battery pack's down here. We will be able to see the battery pack. But I'm not, I don't think I'm going to open the battery pack up, just for safety. And the top cover it lifts off like that. Okay, now we've got more. More shielding, more electronics, there's a, a, a dam here. This is going to be the battery connection, I'm sure. Maybe it is disconnected. There's nothing on there. It might shut everything down. There might be a contactor on here. This is the one of the this is the inverter board, I guess. This is the inverter. This is the output. And yeah, output wire goes here. And that is this one here, I think. No, this is the output wire. That's the DC output. This might be a DC board or a charge board. This might be a charge board actually because the the AC output is this wire here and it's coming from where is it coming from it's this one here and it's coming from this board down here so this is the inverter board under here this is going to be a charge board more than likely I'm thinking that was probably the solar charge controller yeah this would be a charge board or maybe even the DC board for the uh, 12 volt output that might be what that's for this is the inverter board down here. I can see where the AC line comes. The red wire, red and black, go down to the board there. These will be from the battery for sure. These big lugs. Those that input from the battery. That's what these be. This is going to be the DC output. I'm positive. Let's see where this goes. This output, or this could be the charge module. This might be the charge just seeing where it goes. It looks like it goes down to the battery terminals actually, so that's probably the charge. <laughs> Warning! You see this? 
This label will turn red when get wet. No warranty if product gets water in it. So best to take that label and put some tape over it so that it can't get wet. And then if you get it wet, you can open it up, take the tape off it, and it'll still be white. But I didn't tell you that. We need to see more. So I'm going to zip out a few more screws and see if I can swing this DC board or whatever this board is. I think it's a DC board or a charge board or whatever it is, but we're going to zip this out of the way. I think it'll flip up. All right. Let's just get this out of the way. I'm just going to put something in here so that it doesn't touch to support that. Here is the board where all the magic happens. This is the inverter module. Beauty, huh? That is a work of art. It's got a nice big plastic barrier on here that serves two functions. One is to direct the airflow from the fans. There's fans front and back on your picture, bottom and top, left and right. But there's fans here that draw air in, blow the air over the heat sinks, and then there's more fans on the other side that draw the air out. I don't know which way they go, but it's either this way or that way. But there's fans across here that draw out the excess heat. A bunch of relays on here. That's what we heard clicking when it was changing modes, but this is the inverter board and uh, it looks like a work of art. Now I don't read Chinese, but I do read numbers. 2500 watts, 110 volts. Well, that's what we were getting. We were getting 110 volts, not 120. Um, it says the, out I guess this is the output is between 90 and 110 volts AC. This would be the input, 40 to 54 volts DC, I'm guessing. Maybe somebody can, uh, can translate that for me. I don't know what this says. It says 1500 watts, but it also says 2500. Now we were drawing 20, what was it, 2300? Uh, date of production, 2023, uh, what's that, uh, June 20th in Q2 is when this board was produced, or at least when the sticker was printed. So that is the inverter board, and it looks to be really well built. I can see it looks like a conformal coating on there. They've got components glued down on here, such as the fuse. There's the fuse here. You can see it under here. They've got components glued down. Big capacitors and relays and even the main filter caps over here. Uh, these ones here, are prob this is probably the DC to DC side of things. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to guess that this is the side where the DC is stepped up from the you know, 40 volts or 48 volts or whatever the battery is, 42 volts, whatever the battery is. Um, this is where it is stepped up to about 300, 300 and well, about 360 volts, I believe, is what they would be running at. And then the inverter side is over here. This is where the sine wave portion would be generated from the high DC voltage that comes off of the inverter itself. Or maybe I've got it backwards. Maybe this is the AC side and this is the DC to DC side. I'm not sure. There's a couple of transformers in here and there's a big choke coil over here. So this might be the AC side. Uh, the AC voltage comes off the board right down here. You can see there, that's where the AC comes off the board. There's relays in here that would switch it between pass through when it's in UPS mode and operating from the uh, inverter. And I guess it, it, this would be more along the lines of a, um, probably standby supply. Bunch of transistors or, or MOSFETs on here, on this side. I think there's probably some more on the other side of this. Uh, maybe not, no, there's a bunch of MOSFETs on here. There's, a, there's big four big MOSFETs on this one, a couple MOSFETs over here, or maybe these are diodes. Probably diodes. One of these are going to be diodes to 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 uh, rectify the DC coming off of the uh, switching inverter. Anyway, it looks to be really well built. The wiring here appears to be silicon uh, insulation on here. I can, it seems like it feels like silicon insulation. That one says AC. This is probably the DC battery right here. You know, that's the DC battery. So there's got to be a switch down here that shuts it off. Because these are the DC cables. 
And when I measured across here, I had, I had no voltage. Removed all the screws that hold the cover on the battery. Let's see if we can lift this up and just see whether we can see the battery. I don't know if I can see it or not. Uh, it's in a box. It's all shielded, so can't really see it that easily. One of the reasons I don't want to start disconnecting plugs is there may be a failsafe in here that shuts it down and it'll never turn back on if things are if too many things are disconnected. But here's the battery pack itself. Uh, if we can open this up, maybe if I if I open up this tape. We can see, but the individual cells here all have uh, battery management. You can see the wiring on here. Uh, these are connectors down here that feed down into the battery itself that obviously turn off a contactor to shut off the power when the unit is turned off, which is good. So there's no phantom power being drawn on the cells when it shut off completely. But uh, again, they've got this all taped shut. And if I just cut this tape, whether we can can see in here. All right, here I, I pulled off one of the shield covers so you guys can see the battery. So we've got a series of cells in here. They are uh, WTT. That's the brand of them, whatever that means. They are 32700, so 32700 cells, 6,000 milliamp hour, uh, 3.2 volts is what it says on the side of the cell here can't see anything else. Date of production March 27th, 2023 is when these cells were produced. There are two rows of cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells on the top. And we'll count how many cells there are across. Okay, we look down the front. There are eight rows on this one by seven across. And there are seven on this one by seven across. By my crude math, that's uh, 105 cells. What do we got? We got we got 49 cells on one and 56 cells on the other. 105 cells. And the warranty now is for sure void on this because I just ripped the battery pack open. But uh, that way you guys get to see what's in here. Here's all the battery management for monitoring the battery. And the, the battery management circuit board. There's another circuit board up top here if I can get the camera in. Maybe I can tilt it up to show you guys the battery management circuit because I'm not going to take this apart anymore than it is. But there is a BMS circuit and it's right up top there. See if I can get a shot of it by just pulling this forward a bit. Because this is the extent that this is coming apart. There's a battery management circuit in there. Uh, it's just, and the reason I'm not taking it apart anymore, this, when you deal with lithium batteries, these things are hazardous. You know, they, they are hazardous. And, you know, I mean, all you got to do is look at them. The, you know, when, when, when a car catches fire, an electric car catches fire because the battery is compromised. Um, so there's just no putting them out. If they, I, I mean, these ones, uh, lithium iron phosphate, are much safer than lithium ion. But still, you cause a short circuit on one of these batteries, and uh, you're going to have some. You're going to have problems. Let's just say it's not going to just get. It's not just going to go away. If you cause a short on something like this it's likely to cause a major fire. So that is why I'm not going to tear this down any further than it is. I'm going to start the reassembly process now and then put it on charge so that I have a, yet another battery backup unit for when the lights go out, which I probably will never use. I've got a few of them sitting here now and uh, I've only, I only use a couple of them. I use one as a UPS and it works great but again quality wise looks to me very high quality and for what this thing likely costs I don't know what the cost on it is I didn't ask but for what this thing likely costs um, it's good to see that they're built the way they are and they're certainly keeping that in mind with the build quality we're not talking some cheap thing that's got that's ready to fall apart. We're talking a unit that really looks to be well put together. One place you can see the quality of construction is the actual subframe. These are solid chunks of aluminum in here and it's quite heavy and that's to protect the battery. The battery itself has got a metal cage around it. That's to protect the battery so that the unit inadvertently gets dropped because 
We all know that that happens out in the field. So it's got these great big bumpers on the side here to protect the battery from impact. And the battery itself is, mount is mounted in its own plastic cage inside. So it's got a shock absorber around it to prevent damage in the event that the unit gets dropped. Because out in the field, that's exactly what's going to happen. This is a heavy unit. Someone loses their footing. Missteps. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to drop it. Might not do it any good, but um, at least you don't have to worry about the battery itself taking the brunt of it, which is what would happen on an all plastic design. Oh, I know I've just set off the grammar police because someone's going to fire off a comment and say, they're not batteries, they're cells. The combination of all the cells themselves make up the battery. And yes, technically that's correct. If it's a single cell, it's the battery. But if you've got multiple cells, in this case, 105 cells that are put together to make a battery pack. So technically someone, the grammar police, will we'll come out and correct me on that. I get a laugh out of it because you should see what I'm saying to them behind their back when they can't hear me and I'm not responding to them. It's a raised middle finger is what it is. Top cover. Put a bunch of screws in for this start to get this thing resembling what it looked like before I started on this project. Got to reconnect the, the DC and the AC cables and the control cable to get the unit back together. cable plugs in there. The AC cable plugs in here. They're different lengths so they don't one won't reach to the other so you can't uh, plug them into the wrong place. AC cable plugs in just like that and then there's the control cable that also plugs into the front here and it's keyed so it only goes in one way. make sure the unit still powers up now that it's reconnected yep excellent okay now time to put all the screws back in all right there it is back together plug it in for charge it's gonna charge at uh, 317 watts it's gonna go to probably 500 and then I gotta if I want to kick it in to the high power mode, I got to go into the app, load up the All Powers app. It'll connect by Bluetooth. Click on Bluetooth. Next step, there it is. Connecting. And then I just go up here and I click on fast mode. And that tells us to go into fast. Then I can close down the app. And this will kick into high power charge and it will show me how many hours. It should only be a couple of hours, I would think. Well, it's been charging now for eight minutes. We're at 15% now. One last thing before I sign off on this one, as we're charging it here. You can string up to six systems together. So each is two kilowatts. So 12, uh, 12 kilowatts of power. If you have extra batteries or another unit you can plug them together with a special cable I'm sure it says they, they in this connection state the maximum rate of power does not change only the battery capacity is superimposed or added I've got it plugged into my kilowatt meter according to the display it's charging at 1431 watts but according to my kilowatt the meter over here it's drawing 1237, 1245. So we've been going 50, an hour and 57 minutes, so coming up on two hours. And uh, you can see that the power consumption has dropped, we're at 95%. So I would imagine that in the next few minutes, this will hit 100%.
Okay, just finished up two hours and 12 minutes to 100%. Now we know from zero, or actually 5%, that's where it shuts off, but a full charge, so two hours and 10 minutes, call it. And we're good. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this video has gone on far too long, but this is quite the unit that we really needed to tear down and give it a good workout. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.